hello i am making this uh, video because i feel incredibly stifled uh, i i can find almost nobody whom i can converse in english with uh, this might sound trivial for, for most people but it's really important for me uh, um, one thing one thing is yes yes lots of malaysians uh, are able to speak and write English uh, but let's be very frank majority of uh, Malaysians really speak and write horrendous English very egregious uh, of course of course I'm not making a value judgment because years ago or in fact decade ago a decade ago I spoke and wrote English in, in a similarly horrendous manner so, so I have no problem of people being audacious, being, uh, being shameless to, to, to make mistake, to do something uh, badly simply because they are beginners. The, the, the only thing is, the truth is, I myself am not that good in uh, English as well uh, as it is not my native language. So I'm very afraid, I'm very, very afraid of uh, associating with with uh, any Malaysians who who speak <laughs> and write horrendous English because I would be affected I would be affected uh, because the truth is I I, I am uh, I am way I am still very very far away from how an actual uh, native English speaker English speaker, how how a native English speaker speaks and writes, I'm very very far away from that. So, whenever I I hear or or read some really, uh, really hideous writing or hideous, audibly hideous pronunciation of English words, I I really can't stand it because I literally feel like I would be affected. Yeah. Uh. So 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 today I'm making this video because this this is the currently the only solution I can think of. I have to resort to talking to myself in English in front of a camera, somewhat poignant. Uh, but I have no. Of course, the best solution is to move to a place uh, with tremendous amount of native uh, English speakers, be it the UK, the United States, uh, Australia, and so on. But uh, logistically uh, I am not able to do so in any near future so uh, maybe maybe I could talk about uh, why okay uh, maybe I talk about a reality first I feel that the reality in Malaysian community is, is very binary the Malays okay they are of course they like to use Malay language. You can, if you notice, even a very educated Malay in between every single sentence they utter, when when they're trying to speak English, in between every single sentence, uh, they utter, they will borrow so much of words from the Malay Malay language. Okay, that is very hideous, and uh, of course the Chinese on the other side, the second second largest uh, race in, in this country. Uh, it is. I'm not sure wh wh whether people have uh, talked about this before, but but I feel that it's a well known fact that Chinese and English are two uh, diametrically opposed language. So, so if you notice, people, it is very very hard for Caucasian the Westerners to learn how and act. How to pronounce Chinese words? You look at a video, like for example, Mark Zuckerberg. There is a video about him, uh, trying to speak Mandarin. It's just so horrendous, so so horrible the pronunciation. And likewise, in opposite, I think it is very very, uh. It's very unclear. Or I have no I have no linguistics background. Maybe the linguistic people people with linguistics uh, degree they know. Maybe it has something to do with the tongue. Your, your, uh, because when you you were raised as a native Chinese speaker, you have some inherent limitation 
when you need to uh, pronounce English words uh, perfectly. So, so it is a well-known fact that uh, uh, Malaysian Chinese can never really uh, speak and write English well. Of course, of course, this is not to say that uh, hard work couldn't overcome it. I, I mean, naturally, naturally, there is a lot of uh, barrier. So this is a reality around me. The Chinese are very Chinese, and the the the, the way they they speak English is just so horrible and the Malay they like to borrow, borrow words and so on uh, and then of, I'm, of course I'm not going to talk about grammar vocabulary those kind of things and uh, um, second thing I want to talk about is is of course why is uh, English important for me only for me uh, this is a very subjective personal judgment uh, I I Okay, of course, one very overrated idea about language is people believe, some people are very delusional people, they believe you have a lot of thoughts and ideas in your he head, okay, and then you merely choose one language very mechanically to express them. Uh, of course, a very simple idea, yes, I agree, that uh, you, uh, you want to talk about the lunch that you are going to have, you are going to talk about uh, uh, the video games you want to play, so those, those very naive ideas, you could do that mechanically. But the reality is, a lot of abstract, high-level, important ideas, they are never formed, uh, they are never formed, uh, they are, they, are, they are never formed in your head in the first place and then only you choose the language the reverse is true those abstract ideas uh, be it scientific ideas uh, be it even even ideas about psychology how you deal with people your emotions philosophy those kind of things right you will tend to first use languages that you are very used to and you conceive those ideas in your brain so of course I have no proof, absolutely no proof. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't think physics or neuroscience could prove this. But this is just my very uh, uh, personal feeling. So so, the languages that you are, you use, literally dictate what you think. Uh, and it is a well known fact that different languages have a different set of vocabulary. So for example, es Eskimo people, in their vocabulary, they have lots of words to describe ice. Or, or cold weather or snow differently so likewise uh, one very awkward thing about Chinese culture is that in in the Chinese words the voc there are enormous vocabulary talking about courtesy talking about politeness talking about chivalry talking about piety those kind of things and uh, I, I West in, in English wise I feel that so, there are so many uh, advanced philosophical vocabulary or scientific vocabulary those things are simply missing missing in in Chinese words so the moment you you uh, okay this is my personal judgment people think that you you could get along get well uh, get along in your life by just learning those basic English words literally all the kindergarten words you uh, eat sleep play uh, happy sad but I I, I, I I would like to warn you the moment uh, if you use simple English words you could you, if you only know very rudimentary English words okay you are largely uh, stymied you are largely prevented from conceiving high-level ideas of course you could seek solace from uh, Chinese words you could say that oh I could express physics concept using Chinese words uh, I don't deny the possibility, but I feel that it is quite an uphill battle because the majority advanced concept. I'm not only talking about the natural science. Uh, people people think that oh yeah, the most ad, ad, adva the most advanced technology. You are talking about physics. I don't care about that. You are talking about mathematics. I don't care about that. But I'm talking about social science matters also, be it in business, be it in economics. So those kind of things, right? Many uh many research in the frontier they are carried out in the western world so i can i could uh, point you a number of example uh all the most advanced books that can literally open the door to the world open the your door to the world are in uh, are originally in english um 
of course the famous one in physics will be books by Feynman uh, biology books by Richard Dawkins uh, but let's not talk about only the natural science because that tends to really put people off uh, we can talk about social sciences, so anthropology, uh, very, very important books called Guns, Gems and Steel. Even, even this, uh, this famous book, Sapiens, written in English originally. Uh, and then what else? Economics, uh, you could argue that all books by Keynes, uh, by uh, Milton Friedman, by Hayek, they are all written in English at first. Uh, um, what else? Uh, I, I don't know much about finance, but I believe finance people also wrote book, uh, write book in English. And of course, you could argue that oh, people would eventually translate into Chinese or Malay, your own language. Uh, let's wait for that. Do you know, in average, it takes about 5 to 10 years for a new book in America or in, 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 a, in, in a Western Europe to be translated to, to Chinese. Of course, you can use Google Translate to copy the entire book and paste it. Uh, good luck with that. So, so I it is it is very dangerous. The moment uh, you give up learning and improving English is the moment you are uh, you are saying goodbye to the most most. Uh, you are saying goodbye to a lot of new things, a lot of uh, not only new but wonderful things, because because people in the past uh, you need to know that in the reason the reason why western europe and america are so uh, highly advanced today it has a lot to do with um, the 17th century industrial revolution in, in in uk it has a lot to do with a uh, 16th century uh, the Enlightenment. So those kind of movements. movements. So, so even books in 16th, 17th century uh, about very, very important history, they were all written in English. Uh, I don't really know what are other civilizations doing at that point of time. I think most of them are sleeping. Yeah. So today, I just want to pontificate about uh, pontificate in English. Uh, in fact, I feel that um, I, I, I feel that the things that I said just now are somewhat messy. I don't really have an organized change of thought. Yeah, so, so thanks for hearing. Uh, hopefully, I will still pontificate day by day, uh, tomorrow, next week on onwards, so that I would not... Um, yeah, I hope that I will not deter deteriorate in my uh, English speaking and writing. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.